Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on make predictions. Our objective is to predict actions of a larger group by using a sample. If we were to scan the lesson, we could write two headings to make an outline of the lesson. The first heading would be make predictions using ratios. And our second heading would be make predictions using equations. So as we get into our vocabulary startup, statistics deal with collecting, organizing, and interpreting data. A survey is a method of collecting information. The group being studied is the population. Sometimes the population is very large. I mean, if you think of the United States, it's a very large population. To save time and money, part of the group called a sample is surveyed. Whenever it becomes election time and you see polls on the news like 45% of the country believes blank, well, it's not like they asked every single person in the country. They took a sample. So for each survey topic, determine which set represents the population and which represents a sample of the population. Write population or sample. So if we look at the first question here, dress code changes, Set A, the students in a middle school. Set B, the seventh graders in the middle school. Well, that first one, the students in the middle school, that sounds awfully like the population to me, the larger group, whereas the seventh graders in the middle school are the smaller group, so that's the sample. For favorite flavors of ice cream, set A, the customers at an ice cream shop in town Set B, the residents of a town. Well, again, the residents of a town, that's the larger group, so that's going to be the population. Whereas the customers at an ice cream shop in the town is our sample. It's our smaller group. So as we next look into our real world link, Logan wants to survey students in his school about their favorite and least favorite ice cream flavors. Describe a possible sample Logan could survey instead of surveying the entire school. Well, what if you pick random students in the cafeteria? What if you just pick every, say, 20th student entering the cafeteria to survey? That way you're not asking the entire school, you're just asking, well, 1 20th of it. Our first heading that we listed to start the lesson was make predictions using ratios, and that's what we're going to talk about now. You can use the results of a survey or past actions to predict the actions of a larger group. Since the ratios of the responses of a good sample are often the same as the ratios of the responses of the population. In our first real world example, the students in Mr. Blackwell's class brought photos from their summer break. The table shows how many students brought each type of photo. And if we look over at this table, six brought in students pictures of the beach, four at a campground, seven from home, and 11 from a theme park like, say, Cedar Point. So what is the probability that a student brought a photo taken at a theme park? Well, we have a total of 28 students. 11 of those brought in photos with theme parks in it, and so 11 out of 28. Then, there are 560 students at the school where Mr. Blackwell teaches. Predict how many students would bring in a photo taken at a theme park. So this is where we take our 11 28ths that we found and set it equal using a ratio slash proportion, S over 560. 
560 students in the entire school. We're looking for the sample of that. And the way they solved this was they had looked and said, okay, I can multiply by 20 to get from here to here, so I can multiply by 20 to get from there to there. I would like to show you a different way to solve this type of thing where we still have our 11 over 28 equals s over 560. But this time we actually solve it using cross multiplication. So we would take our 11 times 560 and set that equal to the other cross product of 28 times s. 11 times 560 is 6160 equals 28s. And now to solve for s, simply divide by 28 on both sides. And we end up with the same answer of 220 for s. So if you can see what's going on here by multiplying by 20, you certainly could do that. If you can't, uh, then I would suggest cross multiplying in order to solve for your ratios. Let's see if we got it. A survey found that six out of every 10 students have a blog. So what is the probability that a student at the school has a blog? Well, we would start that problem by saying six tenths, six out of 10. But that simplifies to 3 fifths. So for our answer, if we were to write it as a fraction, it would be 3 fifths. If we were to write this as a percentage, it would be 60%. And if we were to write this as a decimal, it would be 0 and 6 tenths or 60 hundredths. Then, suppose there are about 250 students at the school. About how many students have a blog? Well, if we make this prediction using ratios, we would set up our 3 over 5 and set that equal to, we don't know how many, so s over 250. I'm going to write that again one more time just to show the two methods of solving using ratios. If you were to take 250 and divide by 5, you get 50. So you could notice that you're multiplying by 50 to get from 5 to 250. Well, that would mean you would need to take 3 times 50 to get to s. And s would then equal 150. So again, if you looked at 250 divided by 5, you get 50. So 5 times 50 is 250. 3 times 50 is s. Or you could use the cross products and cross multiplying so that you have 3 times 250 equals 5 times s, and 3 times 250 is 750 equals 5s. And when you divide by 5 on both sides, you still get 150 equals s. So two different ways of solving using these ratios. Either way, you get about 150 students. Our second heading was make predictions using equations, and that's what we're going to try now. You can also use the percent equation to make predictions. So in our third guided example, a survey found that 85% of people use emoticons on their instant messengers. Predict how many of the 2,450 students at Washington Middle School use emoticons. In words, what number of students is 85% of 2,450 students? Well, we'll let n represent this number. So n is going to equal 85% as a decimal times 2,450. Well, that gets us 2,082 and 5 tenths, and we'll round up to get 2,083 students. So it's taking our percent as a decimal and multiplying by our total student body. In our fourth guided example, 
The circle graph shows the results of a survey in which children ages 8 to 12 were asked whether they have a television in their bedroom. And I would certainly fit in the no TVs in bedroom at that point. Uh, it was my cool Aunt Connie who, uh, who got me a TV when I was in high school finally. But anyway, predict how many out of 1,725 students would not have a television in their bedroom. You can use the percent equation and the survey results to predict what part P of the 1,725 students have no TV in their bedroom. And this is the part of the equation, no pun intended here, that we do need to learn. Part equals percent times the whole. So P, part, equals our percentage as a decimal times the whole. So about 932 students do not have a television in their bedroom. Refer, in our got it question, to example four. Predict how many out of 1,370 students have a television in their bedroom. Well, if we start with part equals our percent times our whole, we do not know our part, so that's a P. Our percentage of students who have a television in the bedroom was 46%. And 46% written as a decimal is 0 0.46 or 46 hundredths. So we would write that as 0 0.46 or again 46 hundredths times our whole in this question was 1,370. And when you take 46 hundredths times 1,370, that product, our part, is 630 and 2 tenths. And since it's two-tenths and maybe not five-tenths or above, we'll just for our answer say about, we'll keep it 630 students. Now I would like to stop and reflect here. What proportion could you use to solve example four? One of the ways we can set this up is using the part over whole equals percent over 100, where our part is unknown, P, over our whole group of 1,370 equals our percent, which was 46, over 100. So you could use this pr uh, proportion, cross multiply and solve, and you would still get about 630 students. And that is it for this lesson on make predictions. You need to make predictions once again using ratios and make predictions using equations. Good luck.